Now, what were you saying to me, darling? So anyway, this National Crime and Violence Test had a number of skits, and it wasn't something that was uh, of a, an individual police department. It was a national uh, test that was based on, you know, national study. And it was uh, uh, in ABC. The audience was to choose uh, which way would be the most likely way to survive. Mm -hmm. And by their study, you know, that, that would be the way. So anyway, in this skit, they had uh, a home situation where there's a couple in the bedroom and the wife elbows the macho man and says there's a prowler in the house. All right, so the macho man, you know, Anyway, the situation began with this uh, guy who uh, was was new to the break-in business, uh, didn't know how volatile the situation would be to break in, how serious a crime it was. He happened to own a gun because he was a good old boy, you know, he would just say, you know, gun. So anyway, uh, when the guy is alerted that the, there's a prowler in the house, he runs to get his gun. And he goes through the lighted bedroom doorway with his gun, and the intruder is in the shadows, and he already has his gun pointed. The intruder. Right. Okay. So anyway, uh, the homeowner, being startled, takes his gun, and he moves it toward the shadows. Mm -hmm. Well, we know what happens in this scenario. They both kill each other mm -hmm. because it's deadly force against deadly force. So in the ABC, which way was the most likely way to survive? And this was long before there were cell phones. Mm -hmm. He said, climb through the bedroom uh, window and call the police from a neighbor's house. Because even though the home is your castle, when it comes to the volatile home invasion situation and you've got this deadly force against deadly force mm -hmm. which is all about the element of surprise and this intruder didn't intend to shoot somebody but he was forced to shoot yeah, right. because it was deadly force against yeah, deadly right. force. When he came out with so gun. that's how complicated this gun issue is that it's not just protection it can get you killed just as easily. That's right. Uh, so Anyway, you know, the police department said, you know, drag the body back into your house and, and you're, you're legally good. Well, it doesn't no, work all the time. It doesn't work all the time. Uh, I was jury foreman on a Bobby Maddox uh, murder case where a guy chased someone down the alley after a break in and shot through the back of a um, window of, of a car and killed the guy. They were. Uh, Gun, there was a gun owner on the jury, and that gun owner wanted to let the guy off. But um, most of the jury were middle-aged black women who lived in the city and were not that pro-gun, and he finally got uh, second-degree murder. And of course, uh, he was th fleeing. He was no longer a threat to him and his, his The threat had left. The right. minute he turned his back, the threat was gone. That's what people need to realize. If they do that dirt and they turn their back to flee, you better not shoot them. Guess what the defense lawyer said? Hmm. Let's send a message to the home invaders of Richmond, Virginia, and, and let this guy get off with the... Uh, well, he wanted me to sign something after the case to, to let the guy off. He was bribing me with uh, a job and all kinds of you know perks. And uh, you might remember his name, Morchauer. He was uh, Michael. Michael Morchauer. The cokehead. Yeah. Yeah. I hope that bitch dead. I hope he don't rise up no more. He's a nasty bastard. Yeah. I know some shit on him too. He need to go somewhere and die. I hope God putting a slow death on him. He was on the news on a regular basis. He was defending everybody. Uh, Not at Beagle A. They didn't do any criminal cases. He probably took a case pro bono. He won't defend it. No poor people at Beagle A. Trust and believe. No criminal cases at all. 
only if he was driving a fancy luxury car. Sure, only taxpayers' money and the poor people's money as one. Living on the boulevard in Westwood, piece of scum. I didn't really have a high regard for him. <laughs> I worked with him for 10 years at Legal Aid. I saw what he did to the poor people, especially the people of color. That's why I left. What's up with all these young people with these damn tattoos? You see them got tattoos all around their neck like a collar. They look like a piece of wallpaper. In my generation, it was the long hair, but you can cut your hair. Mm -hmm. You can't get rid of that tattoo like that. <laughs> That's right. And then they got poisonous ink out there. Well, this is your girl, Teddy Perm. And what's your name, honey? Joe. Teddy Perm sitting here with Joe, having a, a conversation about guns and... When the threat leaves, you can't shoot them. If uh, somebody come and rob you and they turn it back, you better not shoot them. You going down. Oh. Forgive the food in my mouth. I sorry, but I ain't gonna throw this tape away. Get over it. I'm not perfect. I'm just Teddy. Love you guys. See you later.